Marketing could be killing your business. I realize that's a strong statement, but hear me out. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how marketing could be keeping you from the kind of growth that your business needs and what you should do instead. Now, as a little caveat, I recognize that my channel is called Marketing by Emma, that my business is built on helping people become more effective marketers. But I hope that by the end of this video, you will understand what you should be doing so that when you do think about marketing, you're able to create strategies that are going to drive more profitable, long-term sustainable growth in today's dynamic, ever-changing and rapidly evolving world of business. So if that sounds interesting to you, then let's jump in. So before we talk about what you should be doing instead, let's just think about what happens when you start marketing. Whether you're preparing for a new product launch, whether you feel like business is slow and you want to generate more clients, perhaps you just realize that you need to be continuing to stay relevant, and so you just want to be top of mind for potential customers, or a million of the other reasons that you may be thinking about how you need to amp up your marketing strategy. And in all of these cases, we know that if our marketing is going to be effective, then we need to get attention. We need to get eyeballs. So we think about how can we be seen? How can I impress people? How can I grab their attention? Not to say that traffic and attention aren't important. They're wonderful and necessary. But that mindset is where the fundamental error takes place. And once you're there, it's very, very difficult to get yourself out of that in order to create the kind of strategy that you need to truly get those eyeballs and drive meaningful connection. And that is what you should be doing instead. So the problem is that when you're thinking about all of these ways to grab attention, a massive shift happens that is going to send you down the wrong path that's going to have you questioning why you're not getting more views or more engagement or more sales from all of this hard work that you're putting into your sparkly, shiny, new, amazing marketing strategy that uses all the best and brightest tactics out there. So instead of marketing, I want you to try connecting. And let me explain why. Influencer culture is morphing into social selling. AI is leveling the playing field. Trust is deteriorating. With all of these things that are fighting against us, when we are trying to be seen in such a crowded and cluttered space where people are being bombarded with a constant stream of content that they have to find ways of tuning out to keep from going insane, what do you do to actually stand out, to catch someone's attention and interest enough so that they want to keep watching, so that they want to check out and learn more about this product, so that they want to buy now. What do you do? You connect. When you connect, you're able to build a business that has fans that want to tell other people about what it is that you are doing. You have people that are paying attention that want to open your emails, read your newsletters, engage with you. There is real power in that. And that power comes from connecting. And this is a small shift, but it is so important when you are putting together your strategy. And it can truly revolutionize your marketing strategy. Because with all of these negative things that are going on in the world and with all of these ways that we are feeling more and more isolated as people, we crave connection even more than ever. We are looking for ways that we feel validated, that we feel seen, that we feel understood, that we feel like our experiences are not only our own. And really great marketing does that. So 
I realize that now you might be thinking, Emma, you told me not to market, but then you're telling me to market. This is a little bit of a nuanced exercise, and it seems like a perhaps irrelevant little shift, but I'm telling you that it can have a profound effect on what you are able to produce as a result. So when we put ourselves into the mindset of connecting, what do we do? Let's let's imagine that you're going to a networking event or a place where you're hoping to make some new friends, anything where you are wanting to develop relationships with new people who you don't know. The best way to get them to like you is to make the other person feel good, to make them feel seen, to make them feel understood. In fact, you've probably heard the fact that our favorite words, each of us individually, is our own names. In other words, we are very self-focused. And this is a tool that really great marketers understand and are able to tap into. However, when we have the pressures of driving more business, when we perhaps even have that urgency or anxiety or apprehension that comes along with having to put ourselves out there, which marketing requires, we become very self-focused. We start to think about how can I stand out instead of how can I make this other person feel seen? Are you understanding the difference here? It's just like when you're in person and there's a someone else who is so obviously trying to be cool and trying to get everybody's attention and it really closes them off to the potential of being able to develop new relationships and get that level of interest that they may otherwise get if they just weren't trying so hard. It's counterintuitive, right? We would assume that the more we say, hey, look at me, that everybody would look at us. And perhaps they will for a second. But if there is not something deeper, if we don't give them a reason why, then they're going to swipe away. They're going to click off. They're going to lose interest. It's when we center our interactions around the other person that magic happens. Connection shifts you from the transactional realm to the relational realm. So instead of thinking about how can I get them to buy this? How can I make them want to keep watching? How can I push them to buy? Instead, when you are planning and strategizing, you shift to asking questions like, what is keeping my customers up at night? What are the challenges that they have? What would make them laugh or feel good? How can I connect with them around their fears? Or what are those shared truths that perhaps not everybody in the broader world holds, but I know my customers feel aligned with? What would get them excited? Asking those questions and thinking about all of the things that you do. And the the great thing about this is this helps shape and shift everything so that you're not just thinking about, okay, I need to send an email, but you ask yourself, what is the best way for me to get this message to the customer that I know they really want and need? And so then you ask yourself, should I email or perhaps this is a TikTok video or maybe it's a combination of a variety of different elements, but you eliminate the transactional assumptions of just wanting to make money and you think about the longer term, bigger picture relationship building that is fundamental to creating a really sustainable business that has fans that people want to continue buying from year after year after year. So let's now evaluate what we've spoken about. We've discussed how marketing puts you into a very me-centric 
space that keeps you from connecting. And that if you want to create effective marketing, then you really need to be thinking about who it is that you are trying to drive connection with. So in order to do that really effectively, you also need to have a laser focus about who that person is. You cannot just talk to an amorphous blob of human who lives in a large city and is between the ages of 18 and 99. That's not going to cut it. If you want to make somebody feel seen and understood, then you have to have clarity about who they are. And one of the best tools for doing this is creating a customer avatar. A customer avatar is a complete profile of who your target customer is so that a whoever is looking at it, be it your designer, your photographer, your website developer, your customer service, every single person within your business can have a clear, precise idea of who your customer is, of who you're talking to, and of who you are trying to delight and engage. So in order to do that effectively, I actually have a video that walks you through my process for how to create a winning customer avatar, and you can watch that right now.